I'm in the high desert of Hesperia, California. Let's take a look and see which family I'm going to help now. Hi, we're the Prescott. I'm Katie. And I'm Daniel, and we have seven kids. Marley is eight. Daniel is seven. Trenton is six. Philip is five. Aiden is three. Ella is two. And Reed is one. Look at this lovely big family, look. Basically, we knew each other in high school. He was the cute, older, unattainable athlete, and I was the younger cheerleader, and I was very vain, very into myself, and didn't really want kids at that time. I didn't really ever think I would ever have kids. Wow, this mom went from a cheerleader of no kids to a mother of seven. Hmm, something happened there. I'm an asphalt paving estimator. I work five days a week, and I leave Katie home with all the children to fend for yourself. Right? I stay home with all the kids. Don't say that! Daniel is our hard case. He's very aggressive. You know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, Daniel was diagnosed with ADHD. Daniel, honey, I need you to come and take your pill. These parents need to learn more about their son's condition. Marley is our, our big girl. She's our, our helper. I have depended on her so much, just being my everything. Marley, can you go check and see if Reed is still in his bed? Marley, do me a favor. Marley, can you get Ella's shoes for me? And Mars, after that, could you grab Reed and you run out to the van? Could you run and put that in there? Marley, can you help him like I asked you? Marley, 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 please. Look at this little girl, like a mini mum. And she's eight years old. Handling the seven kids alone during the day at home can be a great source of stress. <laughs> Trenton, if you don't get off that counter right now, you're getting a butt whooping. When all of the kids decide to have a little moment all at once, uh, it is extremely overwhelming. I just get so frustrated and angry. Get out! Get out of here. Get out! You are not putting a timer on. Stop touching people! Look at me right now. No! Get up now. You're pissing me off. Do it now. She's not enjoying motherhood right now. No way. I'm having a moment. I just need you to go away for a minute, OK? Just leave me alone up here. Nanny, please come. Please help us. We Hurry, need you. Hurry, super nanny. <laughs> Hang on, Mum and Dad. I'm on my way. I'll see you soon. Hello. Hello. Hi. Pleased to meet you. I'm Jo. I'm Katie. It's nice Hi. to meet you. Come on Thank in. Thank you. This is the biggest family that I've ever worked with, but I'm certainly up for the challenge of helping them. It's so good to have you here. Come on Thank in. Thank you. Who have we got here? This Who's is this Reed. One? This Hi, is Reed. Reed. And how old is Reed? Reed is one. It was definitely a big thing for me personally to have Joe see, you know, what it is to, to be the mother of seven children and try to do it effectively. What's your name? Miley. Hi, Miley. Pleased to meet you. How old are you, darling? Um, eight. Eight. This is Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Hi, pleased to meet you. Jojo, how are you doing? Good. Good. Since Dad was at work, I really wanted to see Mum go through her everyday normal routine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just watch how you run your own day, really. OK. A couple of hours in, I saw exactly how Mum deals with Daniel's ADHD. I will help you. You need to ask no, me. No, I can't read your mind. I don't know if you need help. You need to ask. ADHD affects 4 to 12 percent of school-aged children. So this is an issue that many families are dealing with. Start doing it now. I need help! Children with ADHD have a chemical imbalance, which makes it really difficult for them to focus on tasks. Also, they can be really hyper and have a tendency to be very competitive. Where is A? Where is A? There. OK, you know what? Your attitude really sucks right now. You are ruining fun time. No, it's going to take an hour to learn what to do. Raising one kid with ADHD is tough enough, but then having to raise six others is a real handful. Daniel's anger escalates to the point where he then becomes physical and he throws things. No! Then not at all. I hate you. Go to your room. Shut up! Go to your room. When I'm in the middle of disciplining a child, I feel like even though Joe is watching, I have to do what I'm doing. 
If the parents are frustrated during the day and have lost their patience. Daniel's that green light that goes off and they see him as an excuse to vent out. I need you at that table now. And I will not tell you again and I will not ask you again. You get your fanny to that table and you get started Don't on the work. I'd like to see mum more relaxed and patient when dealing with Daniel's temperament. Because when she gets really worked up, it only makes Daniel's temperament worse. Do me a favor, would you please? Would you find Reed's shoe? Can you find Reed's shoe for me? Please, just look around. It's somewhere around here. The first thing I wanted to look for was how Mum handles such a large brood of kids. Marley, can you go give Daniel his spelling test? It's turned upside down under his homework packet. Thank you. Marley, can you handle that while I go find Philip? It's really tough for Mum to deal with all these kids, so she needs Miley to be mini Mum to help her. Marley, can you let Aiden outside, please? It's a very common practice for firstborns to have the responsibility of looking after all their younger siblings. Run and grab Marley. Reed's zipper cup from the bedroom out of his Marley. crib. Marley is the oldest child, which leads to Mum putting pressure on her. I'll do this for you. Can you go, no, just give that to him for me, please. Okay. Thank you. Marley, I'm flipping you off with my zipping off towel. Stop talking about flipping people off. Stop it! It's rude! Katie's so tightly wound up that she's losing her temper and overreacts with the kids that something's got to change. Stop it! What's going on? Whilst what Katie was getting the kids under control, I was looking in her closet. <laughs> I noticed all of the rah rah stuff. I keep them. It's one thing to keep your costume because you love your costume, you know? But that's not the reason why Mum holds on to that. What do you remember when you look at this? Um, fun, having fun. It was so much fun for me. It was such a positive experience. It was a... They do represent a time that is, is long gone now that I, I had my own identity. This is what helped me really, I think, get through when my parents got divorced because I was in high school when it happened and this was my outlet. There was a lot to be said symbolically what these costumes represent for mum. So are these symbolic? Um, maybe in some way they are, yeah. Yeah. Talking to Katie about her cheerleading days made me realise how young she was when she started a family. I was interested to find out about Katie's childhood and what her relationship was like with her parents. You have a relationship with your mum and your dad now? Um, yes, I have a great relationship with my mum. She's one of my best friends. But your dad? I don't see him a lot. We have different views on his lifestyle, and so I don't... What's... what's, what's he is like? homosexual. Right. And so, um, you know, Daniel and I, even though we frown upon that lifestyle, we accept and love him, but it puts a strain on a relationship. Katie's father walked out when she was 13. She had felt betrayed and lied to because his truth of being a homosexual had come out. And that had shattered her family. The man in your life, your, your father, then chooses to leave. And the commitment with your mother is no longer there but he didn't show commitment with you either, right? Hmm. I feel the need to have my dad be an active part of my life and, and pursue a relationship with him. It was something that Daniel and I had discussed before, but and there was always that you know, restriction put on what I could allow because Daniel wasn't comfortable with that and that went against his inner you know, beliefs as to what is right. And he's very much a black and white thinker. And so when he was gone, it was just, you know, the stress of trying to survive with my mom. And so we were just kind of left to, you know, pretty much fend for ourselves. The fun and the joy was gone. How much have you moved on from that? Not much. OK. Talking about my dad and, and getting that issue out in the open was extremely excruciating for me to do, because that is not something that I normally talk about. Today was hands down the hardest thing that I've had to do in coming to terms with the whole situation. What do you miss? Having a dad. 
Katie's feeling really lonely and isolated as a parent and emotionally she's going through a lot of turmoil because her father left when she was very young, which is making her feel abandoned. You're not doing bad, are you? Family, seven kids, you are committed to one another in your strength of providing for your children and that goes beyond. But even when the tough gets going, you muster through and deal with it the best that you can. And that's what we're here to talk about. The best that you can right now is in a place that's not ideally good. Okay. So the first thing that I do want to talk to you about, Katie, is the tall order that you give yourself every day. You are so hard on yourself that you create drama where it's not necessary. <laughs> You're not in there. Mm -hmm. You feel the same. Sometimes. I try to tell her that I think she's doing a great job when she tells me she's, she thinks she's failing them and I think she's doing a good job. You didn't even think about having kids and then made that decision to keep your husband happy because that's what he wanted. And the demands that you put on yourself are stopping, are stopping your kids from just being, just being kids. You know, I, I think your expectations for the kids are unrealistic. You know, let's talk about Marley. This little girl's carrying the weight of your problems and your problems on her shoulders. Too many. It wasn't her choice to be in a family of seven. It was your choice. And your choice of having a big family is your responsibility. It's not working. It's not working and it needs to change. Let's change it. ADHD, Daniel, diagnosed with this condition understanding Daniel's medical condition is so important for the pair of you. But you choose time and time again to forget that he has ADHD, that he's going to get hyperactive. It's not to say that it won't get better, but you forget. So you scream at him and you shout at him. All that does is create this defiancy in Daniel. It doesn't bring resolution. We have the desire to change it, right. but we just don't have the knowledge of how. Life just happens and I just deal with it and on the very top level. Because you're too busy upholding the importance of everybody else's expectations. Instead of standing up and saying, and I can only do what I can do. And that comes from a deep down insecurity of feeling that you will lose love that you had. I have to bring this up. Your father is, is so relevant in this. But you're not willing to accept the way he is. His sexuality has nothing to do with his ability to love his daughter. But his abandonment does. But if he's being pushed because he's being told that his sexuality does not belong in this home, then how can he make that bridge as well? You're torn. You're torn because you, you love your father and you want to build a relationship with him, but you seek permission from your husband to do that. What is it? Say it. I need you to get over the having a problem with homosexuality. I need you to let it go. And you know I'm not happy about my dad's choice, and I oh, never I will be. But, but what? But he's my dad. And what? And I need him. And what? Hmm? And what? I tell him. And what? I just need you to, to realize that he's my dad, and I need you to respect it, and I need you to try not just to be cordial. I can try, right? What is much needed in this house is fun. 
all right? We need two parents to get stuck in, hands-on, rolling on the floor with their kids and enjoying themselves. There's no reason why we can't really get going as soon as possible and change all of this. All right, so, should we get working? Okay. Yes. All right, because we've done some here, but we've got a lot more to go. <laughs> okay. The next day I began teaching, and the first order of business was to convince Katie to take time out for herself, which isn't easy when you've got seven kids. So I came up with a tall order chart to give her ideas about what she can do to limit her stress. Have a break. There are so many times I see you looking for things to do instead of recognising that you should be giving yourself permission just to step down and just chill, okay. all right? Play, play and play, all right? I want to see you do that. Enjoy the time that you have with the kids. Okay. And have fun. Be imaginative with them. Jump into their world. And that's enough. That's all your kids want, right? Yeah. Let's have fun. Yeah. <laughs> when Joe brought the tall order list with her, I looked at it and I thought, oh, Okay, these are things that I think I can do. Katie seemed receptive to the message that she needed to take time out for herself. But later on that day, she had the perfect opportunity to rest when the kids were playing with their toys. And she chose to worry about cleaning up. The toys are all over the place, but the kids are going to tidy up those toys at the end of the day. Okay. okay. The most important thing is, you know, the kids are getting your time. And that is so important because that you can't, you can't replace. Yeah, it's true. You know, I lost focus of those things that were on my tall order. And I found myself, once again, caught up in the moment. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yay! I could see that Katie was going to have a hard time changing her ways. So I came up with a symbolic way of teaching her the principles of letting go. So what you're going to do is put your hand through the Katie trap, and you're going to take one of those balls, and you're going to get it out. Okay. Do you want to see what you're holding on to? Fear. Mm. You've been holding on to fear so tight for so long that you can't set yourself free. So the only way in setting yourself free is to do what? Let it go. Let it go. Exactly. Unrealistic expectations. Yeah, that one, frankly, I'm really glad to let go of because it was driving me nuts. <laughs> I was just really tired of failing. <laughs> so my point being is that sometimes when we hold on to things, we cheat ourselves. I could see that there was a real weight being taken off of Katie's shoulders as she made the first steps forward in having realistic expectations that were achievable so she could start to feel good about herself and not feel like a failure because she's not. With mum committed to lighten up, it was now time to address Daniel's ADHD. And as soon as dad came home from work, he decided to put Daniel in a timeout and I got the chance I needed. So stop for a minute, what happened? The pair of you are arguing. Come over here, Daniel, because like both of them are wellering away like foghorns here. Do you hear me? You hear me? You hear me? You hear me? What went on? No shouting, stay calm. Nobody can understand you if you're shouting, okay? What happened? Um, I was building like something, and she was building something, mm -hmm. and then um, I had a little block, and she took it from me. She wanted to get That's what's important, I feel, here for Daniel, to feel like he's being heard, because that leads to so much frustration. He becomes really impulsive with the rest of his siblings, and then he lashes out, and he's met with discipline that's very aggressive. Give each other a hug then and make up then, OK? And when he's spoken to correctly and respectfully and in a manner that doesn't threaten any kind of hostility with him, he responds really, really well. Stop. Before you're reactive to something, just stop and be responsible and go, right, I need to hear both sides and be calm about it so that you take all the anger out of the situation because you're there purely just to listen. The way we approach Daniel's ADHD, I don't think we're doing the right thing. I think Joe was correct in what she was telling us. The next task for me was to get mom and dad to see each one of their children as individuals rather than one large pack. And I had two different ideas of how to accomplish that. Okay, so look, this is what I want to show you. 
hearts. Seven of them. Each day I want you to write something very positive about each one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to give them their hearts at dinner time. Oh, cool. And so using the hearts every dinner time allows mum to put a really nice, loving, positive message on that for each and every one of them. Okay, Ella, there's yours. And there's Reed's and Aiden and Philip. Thank you, Mom. It allows me to really say what I'm thinking and, and feeling and, and not being afraid to just put it out there. You were very responsible today. Here says, Philip, you were very helpful today. Thank you. I love you, Mom. Because <laughs> you were a good helper. I love you. you Mom. I like the hearts because it makes us feel better about ourselves when our mom gives us good good comments and stuff. Aiden, you are so fun to play on the swings with. And Reed says, Reed, I am so proud that you said lizard today. I love you, Mom. <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal for him to say oh. things like that. To hear that on a daily basis is going to be so good for their hearts and, and their little souls. Where's 301s? Can you come? Where's 301s? The heart's idea is for mum to be positive about writing a little message for each child so that they get individual attention. Spreading the chores amongst the three eldest children takes the burden off Amali and it also allows the other children to share the chores equally. Okay, you're going to know you what your chore is for the day because your initial will be pinned to one of the chores and placed onto the cork board. I thought that was a better idea, because then my mom and dad didn't have to do a lot of work, I didn't have to do a lot of work, and we all had a good amount of responsibilities. Also because you are the oldest, you will be privileged with good behaviour in staying up a little later too, over the weekends, and maybe having sleepovers. Yes. I find it absolutely bizarre that KD has been here for a year and hasn't even met any of her neighbours. And so I thought I'd venture outside her own doorstep and start to make some neighbour friends myself. These are your neighbours. <laughs> Hi, guys. Nice to meet you all. Oh, my gosh. Love I hold on to my old neighbourhood and the way we had it so much so that I really fight against making friends here. This lady's been living here for a year and still <laughs> hasn't met any other mothers. As you can see, these are all mothers. It really showed me that, you know, there is a community. And sometimes it just takes one person willing to step out of their comfort zone and say, hey, you know, let's be friends. Yes. That's, That's so awesome. funny. Well, come on in and make yourself at home. So, Katie, this is for you, mum to mum. Okay, this is all your mum's addresses and numbers in here. <laughs> I gave Katie a mum to mum book so she could place the mother's addresses and telephone numbers in there to be able to identify the name to the face so that she'll know who she's inviting around. I'm really glad that you've come this afternoon because it just really shows you that in a neighbourhood there are so many other mums who are out doing the same thing that you guys are. It is challenging when you're at home with your kids. You want to know that you can pick up the phone and say, hey, this is going on today. What's your advice? And to be able to support one another. And that really is crucial. Keep in touch with one another. Ring one another. Support one another. You're all women raising children. And even if you don't talk, I'll talk your ear off if you'll listen. So you can call me. And if you have nothing to say, I got plenty to say. <laughs> Katie came out of her shell and she had a great time talking to the other mothers. I think it's a sigh of relief for Katie to realize that she's not as lonely or isolated as she thought she was. I really appreciate it. I, li I love meeting all of you. You're all welcome you to come anytime. <laughs> You're very, thank you, Joe, for inviting them. This is really great. Whether you have one kid or 20 kids, all moms are in the same boat. They need a support system. It is time for me to go for a few days only. But in those few days, remember everything that you have in this house works for you and it's there to serve you. So take ownership of it. 
It's very easy to do the things that you know your teacher teaches you when they're standing over your shoulder. But when that teacher leaves the classroom, it's basically up to the student. Bye. Katie and Daniel are going to have their hands full with the new techniques, <laughs> but I hope they do a good job in remembering what I've taught them, because when I get back, I plan on them both speaking to Katie's dad. The Prescotts have spent three days without me, so it's going to be interesting to see if they've held their own. How have you been? Doing well. Yeah. So as you can see, we've got some clips here, and we're going to take a look at the first one. And that's all about Daniel and his behaviour and time out and how you guys have addressed Daniel's ADHD and your approach to that, because that was definitely something that needed to be improved. want you to get upset. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you. I'm angry because I keep messing around and it turns into a fight and I keep getting in trouble. Do you want to change that? Yeah. Jade, if you did that, make me real proud of you. Okay? I love you. Come on, Reed. Ah. Oops. I'm going out of control. I'm getting out of control. Okay. I'll always forgive you, right? Yeah. Um, that's nice. That's really nice to see. Look, you're choking watching mm -hmm. that. I can see all your eyes welling. Right. Yeah, it's choking though to watch, isn't it? You know, you feel a bit like when you watch it, you know? It's tough to see him being so angry too. Let, let's be real here, Daniel. You're still learning how to compose yourself and not get wound up by Daniel when he kicks off. It really is about your own temperament because you're, you're feed into that banter or right. you won't. And learning to step outside your own box and have more self-discipline is what brings you to the point of being able to execute this discipline with Daniel in a successful way. I think that the way we're dealing with it now, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. I think we have it's way better. We have a chance now with him, whereas before I felt like we were, it was hopeless. It was getting worse, not better. Well done, Daniel. Thank well you. done. Well done. Thank you. Okay, so are we ready to see the next bit here, which is all about chores? Let's take a look. Yeah, make sure you yeah, put them in sticking up, the sharp knives, put them in the back, and put them down, okay? Three! Nice. We are cleaning. Here, grab a paper towel and start rubbing it around in the mirrors. The dishes had to be hard for Daniel because he likes the dishwasher a certain way. Like, he has his method. So I have to just, I just have to brag on him that that was really hard, but he is handling it really well. Like, he knows that they're doing their best, and he's not tearing him up for, you know, not doing it his way. I tried to explain to him how to do it, but I didn't, I just let him do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kept my hands off, tried to at least. And the fact is, he's in, he's in, he's doing it, right. you know? And that's what's important here. OK, let's move on to the last but not least. Yes. This is the clip about the hearts and the children. So let's see how well we did with our okay. consistency here. Something else? Marley, here. I want to talk to everybody about something that Joe said. Come here. OK. Listen, listen, I really want to do our family circle tonight. OK. And I want to do our hearts. OK. OK. No running. No yelling. OK. Show me your not calm face. Okay, now show me your calm face. Now what do we need to do right now? Which face? Calm So show me the face you're gonna do for the rest of the night. <sighs> Baby Minnie, don't forget your coat. Mom, why don't you just bring that stuff to the table? Here you go, baby girl. 
So as you can see, you promised the kids the hearts and then they, you didn't deliver. They've really, they've really latched onto that. They love it. They love receiving this positive message from you every night. So please try and remember to do so. You're confirming to them the things that they've done that have been fantastic during the day. And you're reminding them of the things that they've done, which is incredibly positive. I've seen some fantastic, fantastic footage. I'm very, very pleased with that. Of course, there's always room for improvement. It's nice to see the follow through. Well done. Thank you. The DVD footage was absolutely superb. There is still one thing emotionally this family need to overcome, and that's to get Katie and Daniel working on their relationship with Katie's dad, Sherman. How about if I suggested building that bridge this afternoon by a phone call? A baby step forward and having a nice phone call with him. And Katie, we'll go in and tell her. Right now? Yeah. OK. <laughs> All right. I can try. I, I was stunned when Jill brought up talking to Katie's dad on the phone today. I didn't expect it. I think that's this is a big challenge for me. I'm going to call your dad, and I'm going to talk to your dad. OK. Let's see how it goes. And you're OK with that? I just got this knot in my stomach, because I knew it was something I needed to do. You know why we're doing this? Because you know what? It's. It is about time, isn't it? Let's face it. It's about just really being able to, you know, touch base with your dad, you know, to speak to your father-in-law and to, and to clean the air and, and to start afresh. It was time for Katie to let go. Let go of all that bitterness because Katie's dad had made a choice to leave the family. And if Daniel loves her, then he needs to accept his father-in-law, regardless of his sexuality. Hi, is that Sherman? Yes. Hi, Sherman. It's Joe Frost. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm here with Katie and with Daniel. Hey. Hey, hey Dad. I would love just to hear a little bit of how you felt personally with the decision that you made. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I went through just anguish that was unbelievable. I had for years fought it and fought it and I got married, thought that would end it. Got really involved in church, I thought that might help and actually it, it nothing had helped and I still had those feelings and it came to a point in my life where I knew I had to make that decision and once it was over with for me and I'd gone through it, it was like the, the weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders when I you know, finally had come out to everybody. Phone call made me understand where he was coming from with what he was going through. You know, it's a step in the right direction. Does your sexuality define who you are as a father? No. Does it change how you feel for your daughter and the love that you have for her? Absolutely not. I, I love them more than anything, and that my sexuality has nothing to do with that. Your relationship with Daniel has been one that's had its shares of ups and downs, right? We could honestly say. Yes. So, I mean, Daniel, hey, this is your, your dad-in-law here, your father-in-law on the phone. Hey, Sharon. How you doing, buddy? I'm all right. Um, you know, through talking with, with Joe and with Katie and all the issues have been brought up, the main thing that was brought to my attention was that I'm uh, partly to blame for keeping your guys' relationship um, on rocky terms. And uh, I just want you to know that whatever it takes for you and Katie to have a better relationship, I'm willing to do it to help you guys out and help us all out. All right, that's great news. There's nothing I want more than a, a relationship with you, Daniel. I respect you um, tremendously as a father and a husband because I've been there and seen you um, work with the kids and jump in there with Katie, you know. I'm just proud to have you as a son-in-law and I hate to be emotional, but uh, I think you're a heck of a guy and a great father and nothing I like better to be, have a good relationship with you, bud. Yeah, me too. Thank All you, right. Dad. 
It was just nice to be able to hear how much he is proud of Daniel and cares for him, and I think that probably touched Daniel too. In order for a relationship to grow, for you guys, Daniel, Sherman, to spend quality time together, it takes time. Absolutely. Marvelous. All right, Dad. Love you. Okay, I love you too. Bye-bye. I think this is really the beginning of building a great relationship. He deserves it, you know. No matter what's happened in the past, he still deserves to be able to be a grandfather. Give me a hug. <sighs> Thank you. Mwah. Very, very proud of you, bud. Thank it's you. Serious. Thank serious. you. I'm glad we're all together because it is time for Jojo to leave now. Can I get like a big group hug? Uh oh, Can I she's give asking for it. A big hug. A big hug. Thanks, Jojo. Thanks, Jay. You've helped us a lot. Good job, Jojo. Now that Joe has come into our family, I feel like we are in a completely different place. I think we have more peace within our home. I see a change in every child. Take okay. care of your family, huh? Probably. After having Joe come to the house, I, th I think our families a lot better off. It's a lot calmer. I definitely think we're a happier family. Bye, Bye. 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 Take Bye. care. The Prescott family were unhappy. Their hearts were heavy. Their children were sad. And with good communication, open minds, open hearts, we have seven children who are much happier. Parents who are communicating with one another and a grandfather who's going to get to see his kids. That's priceless. We're gonna go set our stuff down and then we'll go see the ducks. I just feel like so many weights have been lifted off of me. It's put me in such a peaceful place inside. I don't, I don't have any food right now. The main reason I started this whole thing was because Katie needed it. And along the way I found some things, a lot of stuff for myself too. I wasn't expecting to, but I did. Stingy, yeah? Yeah. I want one with dip. With dip. I'm no longer having these thoughts running through my mind at the end of the day of all the things that I haven't accomplished. I go to bed with this sense of pride in, in what I've accomplished with my kids that day. And um, it gives me a great hope for the future. So what happens when we run out of grapes? <laughs> they come looking for them. No. I see my family changing since Jim has got here. Yeah, throw, throw whatever. I don't know what they're going to eat. But Talking about my dad and resolving that with Daniel was like somebody just literally lifting a weight off of me. I feel like there's hope now.